No, all the strips in the book were originally in the newspaper. What I do is when I, when it comes time for a new book, I print out all the strips very small and lay them out on a table and just try and put them in an order where it doesn't feel like I'm repeating myself with strips next to each other. And I just try and make it tell a little bit of a story by putting them all together. And there's a few strips which I look at and think, maybe I hurried that week and that's not one of the best because that can happen with a weekly deadline. So a handful go out for not being great and the rest I just try and put into a, an interesting order. The weekly deadline, having to make a cartoon for The Guardian every Wednesday, because that's when I hand it in so it can be published on Saturday, it has been really good for me. I think I'm in danger with my other work of overthinking it and spending too long worrying about a story for a graphic novel. And is it good enough? And is this going to work? But the great thing about a weekly deadline is you just have to send it on Wednesday. So I just have to come up with an idea. And it's in a way a much easier way to make a book, to make it in, a, in these small, small sections once a week for three or four years. And at the end of it, I have a book and I haven't had to think too much about what the book means or what I'm trying to say. I'm just making these individual units which are aiming to be entertaining. And I really like the, the feeling that the newspaper has this little shape and it's mine and all I have to do is, is do something entertaining and not repeat myself. And that's my, it's like a job. Mm. So I like that. Yes, the New Yorker covers are slightly different in that The Guardian, I have a space that I have to fill and it's mine and I know that's there. The New Yorker, I have to pitch ideas to them and I do feel pressure because it's such a great place to, to show your work and there's so many brilliant people have made New Yorker covers and I don't want to make a bad cover and it's a really hard thing to to make the sort of New Yorker cover that I like which is attractive as a magazine cover but is also kind of a story or a joke and it does can't involve very much text so you're trying to tell the story almost completely with pictures so I find that quite daunting and um, I haven't done a New Yorker cover for a while and I, I sort of need to get back to my sketchbook and um, come up with some new ideas for that. Yeah, well, you're right. The, the, the word searching for an idea is almost all the work for me as a cartoonist. I'm always searching for ideas and I've got every week have to produce these two cartoons, one about literature, one about science. And so I'm always carrying a notebook and scribbling down ideas, even if they're half an idea or five percent of an idea I scribble it down in the hope that that could be built on to make a, a cartoon so I'm always carrying around a sketchbook and anytime I have an idea I scribble it down in my notebook and my daily process is I walk to work and I buy a coffee on the way and as I walk and drink the coffee I often find that can start ideas happening there's something about walking which helps me think so on a really good day the coffee and the walking works and I get to the studio and I take out my notebook and I start drawing and I, I have an idea and that can turn into a cartoon. And on a bad day, that walking and thinking and coming to the studio and I'll draw some more and I'll go out for a walk and I'll go to a coffee shop and I just sort of keep working in the sketchbook until it feels like there's an idea. And when I've got the idea, then I can start to sort of squeeze it into the box for the cartoon and that's that's always pleasurable because the idea is the hard bit and so the funny thing about ideas is it's not like it's, you can't work hard at having an idea you sort of have to think hard but also be relaxed 
and it can be very frustrating. But once I've got the idea, I can start drawing and I draw everything in pencil and, and work it out and then I use a light box to trace it in ink and do all my cross hatching and then I scan that into the computer and add the colour. And I should have said when I do the pencil version, I send that to the Guardian just to check that there's not a problem or some something they don't like in there. But generally, everyone's so busy there, they just give me a thumbs up and I can get on with inking it and then colouring it on the computer and then emailing it to them. So on a good day, the cartoon can take half a day and on a bad day, it might take two days. If they think a really bad day, it take two days. But hope, the aim is to try and get these cartoons done in a day. I've never wanted to be a political cartoonist and I don't think it's really in my makeup as a person to make those sort of very critical, harsh political cartoons. But sometimes something I do almost accidentally edges into being political or being a commentary on life today. And it always makes me a bit nervous because I know these things will be on the internet and there's a lot of angry people who want to argue and I, do, I generally don't like confrontation. So I'm always very careful to be as positive and as even-handed when I do uh, a critical strip. I mean, I think, I think there's a lot of angry uh, discussion about everything and, as you say, I want my cartoons to be ironic, but generally I want them to be positive and to be enjoyable rather than to be critical. So politics is, isn't a big part of my work. Yes, a lot of the a lot of the tools are the same, and my graphic novels. I think you can see they're drawn by the same hand as as makes the weekly cartoons, and I think that's probably made my drawing simpler than it used to be. And I'm very concerned about things being easily readable and being as simple and attractive on the page. Um, and I think that comes from having to work in quite a small space. But the difference with a graphic novel is that you've got to, it's got to be bigger. You've got to think, I'm not just asking for a few seconds of somebody's time as they read a newspaper. I'm asking them to take this book from the shelf and, and read it and I need to give a bit more here. And that I find, I find very difficult and challenging, but that's why I, love writing graphic novels and at the moment I'm trying to get started on new graphic novel and starting is always the difficult thing. Convincing myself that this is a story worth telling um, and that's not something I have to deal with in the weekly cartoons because I'm just in such a hurry to get things finished. But the lovely thing about a graphic novel is having more space, having a whole book to yourself where from the from the cover to the end papers, all these things are telling one story. And I, I love that about graphic novels. And I think however hard it is, I'll, I'll always want to make them. Beginning to work on my next book, it, it's a little bit like the weekly cartoons where the difficulty is coming up with the idea. The, the difficulty for me with graphic novels is, is coming up with a concept which feels like a good story worth telling. And I sort of desperately want to be making pages and drawing, drawing panels and doing all the sort of almost craft elements of making comics, which I love. But first I have to find a story and make it, structure it so, so it makes a good reading experience. So at the moment I'm sort of blundering around in the very earliest dark stages of making a graphic novel. But my plan is the next book I publish will be a graphic novel.
Thank you.